two, one. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the Refuge Center. Uh, everyone that is tuning in with us through uh, social media, YouTube, or Facebook, we want to welcome you today. Um, yeah, so we want to welcome you today. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and everybody that's here, thank you. Thank you for showing up. Uh, and before we start the service, uh, let's start with a word of prayer as uh, Wendy and, and, and Max uh, lead us in worship uh, to the presence of God. Amen? Amen. So, Father God, we just come before you, my King, Lord, and Lord, we want to thank you for just the ability, my King, to that you have given us to be here today and just listen to your message, Father God. Lord, I pray that, Father, you will pour out your spirit on Wendy, on Max, Lord God, that uh, you will bless also this service, my King, as, you know, they bring your people into your presence through worship, my King. Father God, I ask that you will receive, my King, uh, this worship as a sweet-smelling aroma, my King, because that's all we have. That's all we have, a song for you. We cannot give you anything else, Father God, and even that is not worthy, Father God. So I just pray that, this will be a pleasing, smelling aroma to you, my King. Lord, we love you. We praise you for everything you've done in our lives, my King. Lord, I pray that you keep moving in the lives of every single person here today, my King. Lord, I pray that you keep strengthening the faith and the walk of every person here today, my King. I know that the enemy has come here to steal and destroy, my King. But your word says that no one, my King, no one can snatch us out of your hand. My King, it says that no one can separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus, Lord. And we thank you for that. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, my King. Amen. Amen. So I throw up my hands, praise you again.
Don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up.
your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. How's everybody doing today? Amen. 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 So um, let's pray. And um, I want to send a, a, a quick shout out to Atasha. She's going through a lot of health uh, difficulties right now. We're going to pray for her. And also, I want to thank her for giving me this shirt. You know, I, I really like this shirt. It reminds me a lot of myself. Uh, but let, let's pray. Let's pray that God will bless this message. And uh, let's pray that God will open up the hearts of everyone here. And the people watching, it's very important. Uh, we know that we have the tendency to harden our hearts sometimes, right? We don't want to hear sometimes some stuff that is being spoke. And it, and it hurts. It, it rubs us the wrong way. And, and I know that when I hear a message and it, it's rubbing me the wrong way, I know the Spirit of God is trying to tell me something about me. The Spirit of God is trying to tell me that there's, there's an area where I need to work in my life or that I need to surrender. And sometimes I'm like, you know what? I don't. I don't want to. But I need to. 
So uh, let's pray. Amen? Amen. So, Father, we just come before you, my King, today, Lord. And first and first, uh, Lord, I just want to thank you for, you know, everything you're doing in my life, my King. And just the way uh, you're using me and you're using some of my brothers here today as well. Thank you, Lord God, for that ability. Thank you for the equipping us, my King. I pray right now for Tasha. I pray that you will bring comfort to her heart right now. Lord, I pray that you will stretch out your hand right now, my King, and just ease the pain and the discomfort that she's feeling right now, Lord. Lord, I pray also that, Lord, you will bless your message, because it's your message, my King. It's not my message. Um, Lord, I pray that you will open up the hearts and the minds of the people here today and the people watching, my King. I pray that uh, you minimize the distractions, Lord. I pray that your, your word, Father God, will not return to you void, my king, your word is not a lie. It, will, it always accomplish what it's desired to. So I pray that your word will not return to you void tonight, my king. But that it will minister to the people here, sitting here today, tonight. And also to the people watching as well. Lord, we thank you. We praise you, my king. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. So uh, before I start this, uh, I want to apologize in advance because... When I get nervous, I slur. A lot of you guys know I have a lisp and I have an accent, so bear with me, okay? Uh, I am not a, what do you call it? I'm not C.S. Lewis, but I do love the Lord. I do love the Lord, and uh, Amen. the Lord put a message in my heart. A lot of you guys know that I've been studying the book of Galatians. It's my favorite book, and he changed my message a few weeks back. I was going in a different direction, and he steered me another direction. And even though he was telling me to go another direction, I still wanted to preach on his book. And I kept, you know, spending time on his book, and he kept bringing in another message to me. And I realized that God was telling me to drop what I was doing and, and share uh, from, uh, from a different book. So the message today is called... What real love looks like. If you're like me, um, maybe you've been looking for that love or that acceptance in all the wrong places. You know, sometimes it looks like love, but it's not. So I want you to keep in mind about that title. But before I go on, I want to share something real quick so that I can start building the story for you guys and give you guys an, uh, uh, kind of an, an illustration of, of where I'm going uh, have you guys ever lost something, something that was valuable to you? And I, I'm not speaking about money-wise. I'm speaking about something that had a, a sentimental value. You know, maybe your mom gave you something. And you know you were so connected and bonded with your mom that she gave you a gift and it, it meant a lot to you. Or maybe it was your father. He gave you something and you were so close to your father that, man, that gift meant a lot to you. And then you lose it. And you look for it everywhere and you can't find it. And it kind of hurts you because, man, it was given by your mom or by your, by your dad. Or maybe it was your wife or your girlfriend, whoever it was. But it meant a lot to you. And you lose it. And, you, and you're looking for it. You can't find it days, weeks, months. And you finally find it, right? And you're happy about it. You feel, this, you feel like overwhelmed by emotion because you know that means a lot to you. Well, today I'm going to share a message about... Something that God gave to Jesus, and it was lost. He didn't lose it. The gift lost itself in the garden, in the garden uh, with Adam and Eve. That's where everything started, you know? The Bible says that God created everything through Jesus Christ, but through Adam and Eve, everything was lost. And ever since then, God has been searching for his flock time and time and time and time again. Um... So today we're going to be on Luke 15, verse 1, all the way to 7. And this is a parable. It's a parable uh, explained in three different forms. A lot of people think, they, they, they think it's three different parables, but it's, but it's one parable explained in three different stories. And I'm not going to have time to share all these three stories, but I'm just going to speak about the lost sheep. Tonight And maybe next time, if the Lord brings me back here, I'll share the next one. And then the next one. Amen? Amen. So uh, let's read the word of God. It says, uh, 
Luke chapter 15, all the way to 7. Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, What men of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. Amen. Let's pray again. So my king, we just come before you, Father God. And like I said, bless your word, Lord. Thank you for rescuing us. Thank you for searching for us relentlessly, my king. And thank you for mending our hearts. Thank you for bringing us to the throne of grace. Thank you for granting us salvation. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your long suffering in our lives, my king. Lord, we love you. We praise you. Bless your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So before I go on, I'm going to give you a little bit of information about what sheeps are. Maybe some of you guys know. Maybe some of you guys don't know. And <clears throat> it's funny because uh, I can relate to a sheep. And uh, maybe you can. Maybe you cannot. And you'll find out. So sheep are frightened by sudden loud noises, such as yelling, barking. Uh, you guys know that the shepherds, they use the, the dogs to shepherd the flock, right? And they're barking and they bark from one side and they move to another. So they, they are very timid animals. Uh, in response to loud noises and other unnatural sounds, sheep become nervous and are more difficult to handle when they are nervous. You know, a, a, a sheep can get lost nibbling away in a place where the shepherd has them. Let's say if they're in a, in a, in a gated area and one of the sheep is, is grazing and it's nibbling, there could be a hole and the, the, the sheep are so stupid, or yeah, I'm gonna use that word. They're so stupid that they will not pay attention and they'll nibble and there might be a hole in the fence and they'll nibble through the hole without paying attention until they get lost. And they'll keep nibbling away and nibbling away till they realize that they're full, and when they look back, they're not in the den or in the corral. And what happens? They're lost. And when they're lost, they get so afraid that they don't know how to find their way back. So they keep on walking forward. So that's how a sheep gets lost. And like I said, they're timid, they're nervous, they're stubborn, uh, they are very fearful, and they are very susceptible to predators, wolf. Uh, bears, coyotes, wild dogs, you name it. So just keep that in mind, okay? As uh, we start uh, this story about the lost sheep. Amen? Amen. So let's read uh, verse uh, 1 and 2 again, and then I'll give you a quick introduction. Then all the tax collectors and sinners drew near to him to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. Jesus had more trouble from the religious leaders than from those who were lost. The religious leaders were upset because Jesus fellowship and ate with people that were lost and spiritually unclean. <clears throat> you see, the religious people of that time were so afraid and were so concerned with hanging out with people that were lost because they thought, they thought that by physical contact, maybe they will become themselves unclean. That's why they were never around the people that were lost. And when Jesus was around these people, they couldn't stand that. They couldn't stand the fact that Jesus was always eating with sinners. He was always hanging out with tax collectors. <clears throat> You know, the purpose of the Pharisees was to shepherd the flock of Israel, not to push them away. Right? God gave them the word. God gave them a, 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 a ministry. But instead of giving the word of God to the people, they kept it to themselves and excluded everybody else. <clears throat> 
Jesus was trying to show the scribes and the Pharisees where they had failed as ministers of Jehovah. Therefore, Jesus used this parable because he knew that they could identify. He used a sheep, a lost sheep, an animal, which Israel owned sheep, lambs, cattle, right? And he used a coin. Then he used the lost, the lost son. But like I said, I'm only going to be talking about uh, the lost sheep today. Let's go to verse 1 again. Then all the tax collectors and sinners drew near to him to hear him. And uh, one of the things that stood out to me today as I was reading over this, this passage again, it's in verse uh, 35, the second, uh, the second sentence of verse 35 of chapter 14, when he says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. The Pharisees did not want to hear the Lord Jesus Christ, but the tax collectors and their sinners drew near to him because they wanted to hear the word of God. And I told you guys before that instead of them sharing that word with these people, sharing the word of Jehovah, they kept it to themselves and created laws. They created their own laws around the Mosaic law, making it impossible for the people to reach and be able to have that, that relationship with, with Yahweh, with Jehovah. <clears throat> the tax collectors were hated by Jewish people for betraying them by collecting funds for Rome and charging unreasonable fees to them in order to get rich. Because it speaks in verse 1 about the tax collectors, right? And then the sinners in verse 1. The sinners were the common people whom the scribes and the Pharisees did not consider pure before Jehovah. Yet these two different kinds of people came to hear Jesus' message. It says that they drew, ne they drew near the religious people of that time despised these people because these people were commoners. They were poor people. They were at the bottom of the barrel, like in the ghettos or the neighborhoods or at the parks, right? Or under the bridges. That, those were the commoners, the poor people. And instead of these religious people going out there and bringing the word of God, they kept it to themselves, right? And they judge Jesus for doing that. They judge him. They criticize him because he did that often. He hung around with people of low standard. He hung around with drug addicts. He hung around with prostitutes. He hung around with gang members. He hung around with criminals. Okay? He hung around with extortioners. That's who, that's who Jesus hung around with. And it was the religious leaders. It was Zen who should have hung around with that people. But they didn't. They excluded themselves. They thought they were better. Okay? They thought that they were better than them. <clears throat> Let's go to verse 2. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, My bad, I went all the way to 3. In verse 2, the Pharisees and scribes grumbled against Jesus because it was something Jesus did continually in his ministry. They couldn't see past the sins of the crowd. They had hardened their hearts. The religious people, instead of looking at themselves, right? I mean, you suppose that the more, you, the more time you spend in the Word of God, the more introspection you're going to do with yourself, with your walk. Because the Bible says it to, to what? To work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, right? What that teaches me, what that tells me is that I have to daily, 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 daily look within myself, I have to look within myself every day, every day, every day. I have to look what's inside of me. I have to wake up with prayer and end with prayer to make sure that whatever I've learned or that my walk is not getting higher than me. And some of you guys know that I have vertical issues. So, just, oh, wow, you guys are laughing at me now, huh? Okay. <laughs> that was a joke. So think about that. Think about that. Um, and Jesus Jesus knew they had heart in their hearts. And Jesus was trying to make these people understand. But they were so hardened they couldn't see past that. They were focused on everybody else instead of themselves in a negative way. Okay? In a negative way. They were, uh, like I said, excluding that people. And um, instead of bringing them the message of repentance, no, they pushed them away. Right. And that was the people that were in need of the word of God. They needed to hear that. But they were robbing them of that, 
of that, uh, of that, of that freedom, right? They were robbing them people of uh, that service. And let's go to Luke chapter 7. Uh, I'm going to make a reference real quick and because of verse 2. And this is one of my favorite stories. Uh, it says, uh, um, we'll start in 36 and we'll end at 39. I, won't, I will not read the whole story. I don't want to take too long. But just to give you guys the idea of how these people had hardened their hearts. So... Uh, 36, chapter 7 in Luke. It says, Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house, and he sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, a commoner, a poor person. She didn't have no social status. She was a nobody. That's what they call them sinners. Okay? <clears throat> a sinner. When she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him, weeping. And she, wa and she began to wash his feet with, the t with her tears and she, ki and, and she wiped them with her hair, with, with the hair on her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil. Now, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke, himself, he spoke him to himself saying, this man if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. And right here we see that this Pharisee had hardened his heart. Instead of rejoicing that a woman was repenting and was completely broken at the feet of Jesus Christ, instead of rejoicing, he criticized not only the woman, but he criticized the Lord Jesus Christ. This is how this knowledge had puffed up the mind of these people. And let me share something with you. It could happen to anybody. And it happens to everyone here. In your walk, it will happen. Maybe you don't see it that way, but it could happen to anybody. The Bible says that knowledge puffs up. Knowledge puffs up. And I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but I'm going to wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. Let's go back to Luke uh, uh, chapter 15. And let's, let, we start in verse 3 again. So in verse 2, we see how the, the Pharisee's heart, it was hardened. It was completely hardened. They had no empathy. They had no empathy, no compassion for the lost people of Israel. And they were appointed to shepherd the flock of Israel. That was their ministry. It was to guide the people of Israel. Amen? Amen. Verse 3. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, and... Jesus knew that the only way they could identify was by using things that they could identify with. So he used an animal, he used money, and he used a son. During that time, for uh, Jewish, uh, in Jewish culture, family was a big thing. A big, big, big thing. Especially having a son. It was a big thing. Jesus spoke this in two other parables, and two, and two other parables using using things that the Pharisees and tax collectors could identify with to show the purpose of his service and how the Pharisees had failed in their own service by excluding the sinners, the common people, the tax collectors. How many, how many of you guys know that no one is excluded in the kingdom of God? Amen. No one is excluded in the kingdom of God. Everyone is welcome. Let's go to verse 4. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? Practically, basically, Jesus is telling these people, hey, you guys know without a shadow of doubt that if you were to lose one of your animals, you will go out of your way to go look for that animal. And you will not stop until you will find your animal. Okay? And a lot of times people bond with animals. How many of you guys have pets? How many of you guys have lost a pet that you love? Michael? Amen? Huh? Oh, okay. I see. Anyhow, so uh, uh, think about it. These people will do whatever it takes to bring their sheep back. 
because it was theirs, it had sentimental value, they were attached to it, they wouldn't just get, allow it to get lost. <clears throat> and here Jesus is speaking to them using the illustration of a sheep, basically saying uh, that if you guys were to lose one of your animals, you would go out of your way to find that animal. You will not stop until you will find it. And just to give you guys an idea, a hundred sheep was an average size flock in the days of Jesus. A shepherd would leave his sheep, uh, his other 99 sheep, not on care, but with the other shepherds, because by the evening, everyone, will, all the shepherds would come together to guide, to protect their flocks. So when he would go after that, that lost sheep, his other sheep was secure. And it's funny that he's sharing this story because he's telling, he's telling the people, uh, the religious leaders of Israel, basically, you guys, you guys know that you are secure. You know my word if you're walking in my word. But these people are not. Why are you not going after my sheep? Why are you not leaving the other people there and go after those that are lost? Why are you excluding all these people that are so in need of salvation and repentance right now? <clears throat> so to lose a sheep meant that the shepherd was not qualified for the job and show that he was a careless shepherd Jesus was not shepherd in Luke chapter 19 verse 10 says for the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost in John chapter 10 11 says I am the good shepherd the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. You see, he not only came to find the lost sheep, but he came to give his life to save his sheep. Amen. That's how much he cared for his sheep. Let's go to verse 5. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And one of the things that I want to point out in verse 4 and verse 5, It's about the consistent or the persistent search. He's consistently searching. He doesn't stop. And I'm going to read verse 4 and 5 together. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until, until he finds it. And when he has found it, not if he finds it, until he has found it, Jesus is not going to stop, stop until he finds his lost sheep. He will never stop. Notice that Jesus speaks of a consistent search in the previous verse. And, and, uh, and in verse 5 as well. God never stopped until he was able to accomplish his plan through his son Jesus Christ on Calvary. Until it was finished, right? And it brought joy to the Lord. It brought joy to the Lord, even though he, he used his son to go after his lost sheep, it brought him joy because he was opening a door to redeem his people that had fallen in the garden. At the end of this age, he will be able to gather his sheep. His cons his, this consistent search was motivated by compassion and love. It wasn't out of responsibility. It wasn't because he had to. It was be because he loves his creation. Amen. He loves his creation. It doesn't matter how, how much stubborn, how stupid, how hard-headed. I know, I'm trying to be nice. Uh, how hard-headed we are. He loves his creation. In Psalms 139, it says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And I want you to think about that for a moment. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. That means that God created you with such a respect. He didn't just form you. You know, when you're, in a, you're working for a, a, a company and let's say you're building stuff and it comes in and you push it out, it comes in. He didn't build you like that. He took his time individually. He was personal with you when he built you. Therefore, he loves you. Whether you want to repent or not, he loves you. That's what the Bible says, that he, he formed you in your mother's womb. The Bible says that he's acquainted with all your ways. He's familiar with all your ways. He knows everything about you. When he was forming you, you know, he took his time. He was thoughtful about it. That's when it says fearfully and wonderfully made. He made you with respect. 
When he was shaping you, he said, yeah, I'm going to make his neck a little bit shorter than the other guy. You know, I'm going to take a little bit of hair from the top, but he's going to be very unique. <laughs> I'm kidding. That was a joke again. I can't help it. But God made us so unique. Yeah, Bernie, I'm going to make you short. You know what I mean? You're going to have to reach for stuff. And it's fine. I'm happy that way. You know? The way he made me. I love the way he made me. With all the mistakes I've made, I know that he made me. And he allowed me to make a lot of mistakes in my life. Because it was only through the, all my mistakes that he was able to pull me back. Because nothing can satisfy the void that I felt. Nothing can satisfy that void. And it was only by meeting the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. on my own road Amen. that I was able to realize how much I needed that shepherd. Amen? Amen? Amen. And so, like I said, this consistent search was motivated by compassion and love because he loves us so much. And in Matthew 9, 35, 36, he says, Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes... He was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. God is always moved with compassion. Always. And another, another, another stuff I want to share, another point I want to share with you that, that, that I, I saw in, in this commentary, some information about a sheep. You know, when, when this shepherd had a sheep that habitually uh, will wander away to areas that were dangerous, that shepherd would come to the point that he would go look for that sheep, and when he would find it, he would break its legs. He would break its legs, then, uh, I mean, it would break its legs, then after, he would carefully set the bones back in, in place, and it would put it on his shoulders, and he would go back, and it, it would allow the sheep to heal. And after the, the sheep would heal, it will grow closer to the shepherd and it will never leave the shepherd ever again. Some of us here today know what I'm talking about. Amen. Some of us have been living in habitual sin in the past, have come to the Lord and have left time and time and time ever again. I know I'm guilty. I know that. I know that myself more than anybody else. But even though we have wandered many, many times away from the Savior Every time he has gone after you. The Bible says that there's no one that, seeks, that, that searches or that seeks after God. And you know you didn't go after him. He went after you. And it was motivated by love and compassion. Because he loves you that much. You know. And sometimes he has to break your legs. And it's going to hurt. It's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt. Maybe you're going to start walking a little bit pitch and toe. But you're going to be fine. You know. But one thing I do want to share is that... Uh, let us not wonder anymore, but keep growing close to him. Let us not wonder and keep growing close to him. Amen? Amen. His consistent and compassionate search didn't stop until he was able to utter his last words and say, it is finished. He didn't stop until he accomplished that sacrifice. And he was able to say, it is finished. Let's go to verse 6. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. This verse speaks of tremendous joy God feels over a sinner that repents, and it's found in him. The religious leaders of that time should have rejoiced as well when they saw these people broken coming to Jesus. But instead, they were angry. They couldn't understand it. And like I said before, their hearts were hardened. In verse, uh, in chapter five of Luke, verse thirty-two, he says, "I have not come. I, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance." In Mark two seventeen, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. But let me share something with you too. The religious people were in need of repentance as well. Because they have strayed from the word of God. They couldn't see that. And you want to hear something crazy? That was their lost sheep as well. That was God's lost sheep. They had lost their way. They had lost their way. 
It was their own lost sheep as well. Amen? So, God was trying to speak to their hearts, but they were unable. You guys know that these religious people were the guest of honor, and they rejected his word? There's a lot of parables when he's holding a big banquet, and he's inviting all his friends, and nobody wants to come. And he says, well, we'll gather all the people out there in the streets and bring them. Bring them to this banquet. See, they were the, they were the guest of honor, but they refused. They refused God. The Bible says that he came to his own, and his own received him not. <clears throat> Verse 7. I say to you that likewise, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. There is, a, there is great celebration in heaven over a person or a sinner that repents. And it brings a lot of joy to the Lord because that's, that's been his plan since eternity. Since Adam and Eve fell, he wanted to gather everyone together. Uh, the word of God says in 2 Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Amen. And some count slackness. But it's long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. He didn't create humans to condemn him in hell. And a lot of people believe that way. As a matter of fact, uh, hell was created for the devil and his angels because they disobey. They were the first ones to disobey. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, I'll take you to a scripture. Matthew 25, 41 says, And then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. If anyone ever ends up in hell, it's going to be by choice. And it's going to be because you rejected the word of God. And it's because you didn't want to be part of his flock. It's because you rejected the shepherd. So just like that shepherd, when he has found his sheep and he puts it on his shoulders, God is telling you today that he wants to put you on, your sho on his shoulders. He wants to carry your burdens. He doesn't just want to carry your burdens, but he wants to carry you completely. <clears throat> Matthew 11, 28, 30. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Maybe tonight you're struggling uh, with your past and the consequences of your, of your past behavior. Let me remind you, it's already paid for. Amen. It's already paid for. <clears throat> or maybe tonight you just need the healing touch of the Savior. And let me remind you again, he's only one prayer away. Maybe you haven't got to know that good shepherd. But today is the day. Today is the day that you can accept that. And he's one prayer away. And he's, good, he's called the good shepherd for one reason. Because he wants to mend your broken life. Amen. And only, only he, only he can give you a fresh start. Only he can mend this life, your life, that this world and sin has torn apart. So I want to make an application <clears throat> for some of us, for the ones right here that know the Lord, that are sheep of the Good Shepherd, we need to keep serving the Lord with the same passion and gratitude that we had when He first found us. We can't let that fire die out. Some of you guys remember that, right? You remember when He first found you, you came to the Lord, you repented, you were so, man, so passionate about it, right? You wanted to tell everybody. But then as you keep walking with the Lord, you keep forgetting. You keep forgetting, and it becomes a routine. You know, one of the things I tell my guys in the ranch, never forget where the Lord pulled you out of. If you never forget where the Lord pulled you out of, you're always going to be grateful. You're always going to be grateful. And your service is going to be based on gratitude and love for what your shepherd has done for you. Point uh, number two of the application is we need to rejoice with him when, when he brings a sinner to repentance. We need to rejoice. We need to be happy. And also, 
Don't forget to share with others how the good shepherd of your soul has mended every broken part of your life. As sheep, we can only flock together. You guys know that, right? The only way to be protected is by flocking together the sheep, right? But there's a lot of lost sheep out there. And if we flock together, and if we come together, we can go out and we can take Grant's pass from the hands of the enemy, you know? But we have to flock like sheep. We spend a lot of time fighting with each other, disagreeing with each other, right? Trying to murder each other's character, right? Instead of, instead of being like Jesus and going out there and trying to spread his word and trying to save that which is lost, we spend time being at war with each other. And the enemy enjoys that. He loves that. That's what he loves, you know? That's what he wants. But it's time for us to wake up. It's time to wake up. I really believe that the churches here in the United States are sleeping. They are sleeping. And they don't care about the sheep. We don't have to be prideful and arrogant in the word of God to be like the Pharisees. But the fact that we don't go out there and spread the gospel and share with that people, we're just like them. Yeah. And I'm not judging here nobody. I'm nobody to judge. I'm just trying to give you a little bit of awareness, you know, where the Lord is leading me, you know, um, Imagine all the stuff that we can do if we come together. The Bible says that if we come together in his name, and if we agree, it should be done to us by him. And he will grant it. He will honor. He will honor our prayers if we come together. Amen? Amen. Let's close in prayer. <clears throat> so, Father, we just come before you, my king, Lord, and I just pray that tonight, if there's somebody watching my king through uh, social media, that does not know you, my King. I pray right now that as he cries out to you right now, Lord God, that, Lord, you will reveal yourself to him and you will grant him that repentance and you will give him salvation because I know it brings joy to your heart. Lord, I pray for every brother and sister here today. Lord, and I ask that you will ignite a fire in their hearts, my King, and a hunger and a passion, my King, to share your marvelous word, your marvelous works in their lives to other people, my King. I pray that you will give every brother and sister here today divine appointments wherever they may go, and they will be able to share all the great and marvelous things that you have done in their lives. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, my King. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. amen. So you wanna share that song? Yeah. So before we go, uh, they're going to share one last song. If you need prayer, you can step up. We have uh, Pastor Tyson right here who will pray for you. And uh, we have also Jake. We have Jacob. You know, Jacob, you want to come up here, sir? Thank you very much. Uh, don't leave without getting prayer. You know, it's very essential. It was very essential that we get prayer. We all need prayer. I need prayer every day. You know, remember, as sheep of the good shepherd, we need to come together. We need to come together and fight this good fight. Amen? Amen.
With all creation I sing Praise to the King of Kings You are my everything And I will adore you strength and glory and power be to you the only wise king yeah holy 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 is the lord god almighty who was and is and is to come with all creation i sing praise to the king of kings you are my everything, and I will adore you. Filled with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. Hey, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to Everything and I will adore you. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. 